Welcome to this tutorial video of Hatch Kids. In this video, we are going to explore the design section of the Hatch workspace. We are going to see all the tools that are available in the design section and how we can use those tools to create a better looking 3D augmented reality or virtual reality game that you want to build. So let's get started. Go to kids.hatchxr.com and click on the start building button. This will give you some template options to start your project with. You can click on any one of these. I am going to select the castle template and open this up. Now, once the project is open, we are going to go to our design section. How do we do that? We click on the design button at the very top of your screen and this will open up the design section. Now, as you can see, there are lots of tools and buttons spread all over your screen. We are going to go through each of these tools one by one and understand their purpose. Let's start with this huge open area at the center of our screen. This is called the inspector area. Here you can see exactly how your game is going to look like. All the 3D objects that you add to your game are going to be visible here and you can change their properties and set the values to whatever you like. Let's begin with uh, understanding how can we move around in this inspector area. See, this is a 3D space. So you should be able to move inside this 3D space just like you're able to move in your real world. You should be able to look around and you should be able to move forward, backward, left, right and up and down. So let's understand how can we do that. First of all, if you notice, when you hold down the left button of your mouse and you drag your mouse around, you are able to look around in the scene. Okay. And you can move around the scene using the arrow buttons on your keyboard. With the front arrow key, you can move forward. With the back arrow key, you can move backward. And similarly, with the left arrow key, you can move in the left direction. And with the right arrow key, you can move in the right direction. But Given that it's a 3D space, you should also be able to move up and down. How can we do that? We only have four keys on our keyboard, four arrow keys on our keyboard, and they help you move forward, backward, left and right. So how do we move up and down? You will notice that there are six arrow buttons at the bottom left corner of your screen. There are this regular forward, backward, left and right button. But along with that, you also have two new arrow buttons here called fly upwards and fly downwards. These are going to help you move up and down in your game. So you can position yourself wherever you want in the game using these six arrow buttons and by moving around using your mouse. Now let's look at the left panel here. You can see that there are some names written here. Player, Camera, Cursor, Minecraft Avatar, Castle, Gradient Sky and Light. What are these? What do these mean? So when you're building a game, you end up adding lots and lots of 3D objects to your game. And each of those 3D objects are going to have a unique name. And those are the names that are visible on the left panel here. Any object visible in your inspector is going to have a name and that name is going to be visible in the left panel here. You can select an object by clicking on their name in the left panel. You will notice that an, a selected object is indicated by this blue boundary on the object in the inspector. And also their name is highlighted with this blue box in the left panel. This is how you know that this Minecraft avatar object is selected or the castle object is selected or the light object is selected or player or any object that is selected will have its name highlighted with this blue box in the left panel and will have a blue bounding box in the inspector around that object. Okay, You'll, you will also notice that whenever you select an object, a panel on the right side of your screen appears. This displays the properties of your selected object. You can modify the looks 
of your selected object by changing its properties to whatever values you want. Now, every single object that is available here is going to have a unique set of properties. We are going to explore each of these properties in our future videos. Let's understand how can we add our own 3D object in this game. So to do that, you will notice there is a add 3D objects button at the bottom right corner of your screen. When you click on this, a window appears that has a lot of options for different types of 3D objects that you can add in your game. To add a 3D object, all you have to do is click on the image of the 3D object. For example, if I want to add this astronaut in my game, I just click on the plus sign here and it will load and it will add that astronaut object in my game. Now, how do I know my object is added in the game? It's because I can see its name appear on the left side panel here. Any object whose name is available on the left side panel is added in your game. And you can also see that this newly added astronaut object is visible in my game here. Now, you will also notice that whenever your object, whenever an object is selected, it's indicated with these three arrow keys as well, with these three arrows, three colored arrows here. There's a red arrow, there's a green arrow, and there's a blue arrow. These arrows are going to help you position the object wherever you want. Any selected object will have these three set of arrows. And these arrows, when you move your mouse over them, they turn yellow. It shows that that specific arrow is selected. So you can move your object by moving your mouse over any of these arrows and then holding down the left button of your mouse and then dragging the mouse around. So when I select the red arrow, I'm able to move the object in the left and right direction. That is the X direction. And similarly, if I move my mouse over this green arrow, and I press my mouse and move the mouse up and down, I'm able to move the mouse, move the object in the up and the down direction. And then same goes for the blue arrow that will move my object in the front and the back direction. That's the Z direction. So with the help of these three arrows, I can position the object wherever I want in the game. You will also notice that at the top right corner of your screen, there are these three buttons. There's this translate, rotate, and scale button. By default, this translate button is selected because of which you see these three arrows that help you move the object around and place them wherever you want. But if you select this rotate button here, those three arrows will change to three circles. Now you can change the rotation of your selected object to whatever you want. And then similarly, you have the scale object. The scale object changes the size of your selected object. So when you select the scale button, now you can change the size of your selected object to whatever you want in each of the three directions. I can easily change the direction, the size of my object. Now, sometimes we end up changing, setting these position, rotation, and scale values to certain values that we may not like. So what can we do here? You see, there is a undo and redo button here. So undo button reverts back to previous set of values that you had selected for your object and redo changes back to the original set of values that you had set for your object. So if you want to uh, undo any of your previous set of activities, you can just click on the undo button. And then if you do want to revert back to the original set of activities, you can go back to the redo button. Okay, so uh, we covered the undo and redo, we covered most of our tools here. But also, let's uh, explore one more thing. So when you click on this add 3d objects button, you see that there are some words written at the very bottom of your screen. These indicate different categories of 3D objects, different types of 3D objects that you can add in your game. We are going to explore each of these categories in their own separate videos. Also, 
when an object is selected, you will notice in the left panel, there are these three dots here beside the name of the object. When you click on this three dot, a small menu appears that gives you three options. You have an option to rename your selected object. When you click on it, you can give your object a different name, whatever name you want. So whenever you add multiple objects in your game, you can give, give each of those objects your, their, your own unique names. The second menu option here is clone. This creates a copy of your selected object with the same properties as the current object. Let me show you. When I click on clone, it creates a duplicate of this astronaut exactly where this original astronaut is with the same sizes, same rotations, same materials, everything. So if I just move this object, if this, if I just move this cloned object around, you will see that there are two astronauts in my game now. Okay. So suppose I want, uh, I don't want an object in my game. So how do I delete the object? You will notice the third option in this menu here gives you the option to delete a selected object. So you can just select delete here and this will ask you for a confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete this object? Just click on yes and your selected object will be deleted. There is another way to delete an object. You just select an object and press the delete button on your keyboard and that will delete your selected object immediately. Let me undo this deletion. I want this astronaut in my game here. Okay, so this was all about the tools available in the design section. In the next few videos, we are going to explore more about the X, Y, Z values of the position, rotation and scale properties in our 3D coordinate system. We are also going to understand what are the different kinds of 3D objects you can add and each of those individual properties available for the different categories of 3D objects. So thank you for watching this and see you in the next video.